Okay, this is function notation and operations on functions. Um, basically, it's the language of mathematics, you know, where it gets um, the decoding part of the math, all the symbols we use, you know, what do they mean? And fun function notation is pretty important piece of that. It's basically writing all this stuff down shorthand so you don't have to write so much. So let's say I define two functions. Uh, let's say I had 3x minus 2 and then I had another function and I defined it as x squared minus 4. So there's my two rules. And we just wanted to do operations to these functions. Well, you would have f, how mathematicians write this. When you have this function, f plus g at x, just means simply to take f at x and add that to g at x. So in our case, you'd have 3x minus 2 plus x squared minus 4. And you could simplify that to x squared plus 3x minus 6. So that's f plus g at x. Now, you wouldn't necessarily, you could also have a number with that. So you could have f plus g at, I don't know, let's try 2. We'll keep it kind of easy. That just simply means to take the 2, plug it into f, also take the 2, plug it into g, and add them together. So that would be 3 times 2 minus 2 plus 2 squared minus 4. Okay, And you simplify that and you get 6 minus 2 plus 4 minus 4. So 6 minus 2, holy cow, look at the 4's pop up, is 4. And you could have, you know, since we already added the two together here and here and got this as a result, you could have just taken the two and plugged it in there. Just to show you that it works, it'd be 2 squared plus 3 times 2 minus 6. Well, 2 squared is 4 plus 6 minus 6. They disappear. And so um, you'd end up with just 4 again. So that just shows you, you know, you could simplify it with x involved first. Okay, so that's if you add, if you subtract. So um, let's say you had you wanted to subtract f and g. Okay, so um, let's say you had f minus g at x. Okay, so the function f is, uh, we said 3x minus 2 and x squared minus 4. So that would be... You know, f at x minus g at x, which, and I'm going to work down this time, f at x is 3x minus 2, and uh, minus, and I'm going to stick a parenthesis in, so that would be x squared minus 4, if I, if I remembered correctly, yep. And the reason I put the parentheses in is we have to distribute the negative through, so that would be negative x squared plus 4. And that's something that uh, people miss all the time. So that would be negative x squared plus 3x plus 2. And then again, you could find a number. So let's say we wanted f minus g at x. And you plug, or not at x, so let's say we wanted it at 2. And you plug that in and you'd have... Uh, and I'm, this time I'm just going to use the bottom function since we subtracted them. And so that would be um, 2, negative 2 squared plus 3 times 2 plus 2. Well, that'd be negative 4 plus 6 plus 2. And that would be 2 and 2 is 4 again. Okay, so in this case, when you add the functions and when you subtract the functions, you get the same value. So that's kind of interesting, and unless I made an error, but I don't think it did. And then the other thing is, so that's subtracting. I mean, it, you know, here's a question for you. Is this the same? G minus F at X is going to give us the same answer before I move on. Well, if you test that, now you've got G at X minus F at X. And so your g at x comes first, which would be x squared minus 4, minus, and then since we're subtracting the entire function, 
3x minus 2 has to be in parentheses, the quantity 3x minus 2, and so that would be x squared minus 4 minus 3x plus 2, which would be x squared minus 3x minus 2, and so it's not the same. The commutative property doesn't hold for subtraction in functions either. So that's addition, subtraction. You could multiply them and divide them. Multiplication looks like this. Division looks like this. Very similar. And so if we went with the same function, it would be 3x minus 2 times x squared minus 4. Let's make sure I did that correct. Correctly. I'll go back and make sure my functions 3x minus 2, x squared minus 4, right? And then you just multiply them like normal. So that'd be 3x to the third. You know, you've probably done this a hundred times. Minus 12x minus 2x squared uh, plus 8. Hopefully I didn't make any errors. So that'd be 3x cubed minus 2x squared. Somehow I feel like I've made a mistake. Um, minus 12x plus 8. Yeah, yeah, that's right. So I used to use distribution. And so there's my rule f times g at x. And again, you could plug in a number. I'm not going to do that. And then division works similarly. F, that f over g at x is the same as saying f at x divided by g at x. And so we know f at x is 3x minus 2, g at x is x squared minus 4, and there's your function for f at x over g at x. Okay. And then it's just a matter of plugging them in. So let me give you some examples. So let's say I had two other functions. Let's say I had h at x equals 2x plus 1, and I had um, k at x equals uh, x squared. We'll keep it simple. And I wanted h over k at 3. Okay, So that would be 2 times 3 plus 1 over 3 squared. And so you'd have 7 over 9. Okay. Um, let's say we wanted uh, uh, hk3 h times k at 3. So h times k at 3 would be 2 times 3 plus 1 times 3 squared. And when you do that, you know, do order of operation, don't distribute. That's going to make things ugly if you do that. So you'd have 7 times 9, or 63. Um, if you wanted k minus h, at, I don't know, 5? Well, we know k is x squared, so we'd have 5 squared minus, and again, in parentheses, because we got to plug in the, we got to subtract it out, it would be 2 times 5 minus, or plus 1, excuse me. And again, do your order of operations. So that'd be 25 minus 10 plus 1 is 11. 25 minus 11 is 14. Last time I checked. And so there you have it. That is, uh, you know, basically adding, subtracting, multiplying, dividing functions and how you do that. So I hope that helps. Again, if you have questions, make sure you ask. Thanks a lot. See you next time.